Today, Apple shares tick higher after CNBC broke the story on its latest moves to produce a self-driving electric car. Plus, what's next for Jeff Bezos as he walks away from the top job at Amazon, and what awaits Andy Jassy as he steps up to replace him? And finally, first GM, now Ford, is cutting production of its trucks as a global semiconductor chip shortage hits the auto industry. I'm Mackenzie Segalos, and this is CNBC After Hours. Stocks rallied for the fourth straight day. The S&P closed at a record high, and all three major indices jumped more than 1% as the number of first-time jobless claims came in lower than economists were expecting. Now, Apple shares also posted solid gains. That stock rose more than 2.5% after CNBC reported that the tech giant was in deal talks to partner with Hyundai Kia to build an autonomous electric Apple car. Our own Phil LeBeau broke the story. Multiple sources tell us that Apple is close to finalizing a deal with Hyundai Kia that would have Apple working with Hyundai Kia to manufacture an Apple car at the Kia plant in West Point, Georgia. What we know from talking with our sources is that production is scheduled to start in 2024, though it could move out. It could be 2025, 2026. This would be an autonomous electric car. And most importantly, this would have Apple hardware and software. What does that mean? That means this would not be Apple software underneath a Kia model. This would be an Apple car in terms of what you sit in, what you experience when you're in the vehicle, both in terms of the shell of the vehicle, the interior of the vehicle as well, in addition to the software that drives the vehicle. And it's important to note here, the differentiating factor that Apple is driving towards is that it is autonomous. And that's important because Apple truly wants to conquer the last mile, the mile between where you are going and your home. Hyundai Kia, brings to the table great manufacturing expertise. The chairman of the company, who just took over the company uh, in October, his name is E.S. Chung, his driving force right now for the future of Hyundai is making sure that mobility is the number one factor that drives their decisions. And by partnering with Apple, Hyundai Kia believes that if this deal is finalized, it will help Hyundai in the future when it develops its own electric and autonomous vehicles. For Apple, it doesn't want to go out and just start building vehicles on its own. Could Apple right now find a plant somewhere, start building electric vehicles, put some batteries underneath and say, here, we've got an electric vehicle? It probably could. It certainly has the resources to do that, but it wouldn't be a differentiated vehicle. Has Apple talked with other automakers? Yes, it has. We know from talking with multiple sources that Apple has not only talked with Hyundai Kia, of which they're in current negotiations, but they've talked with other automakers around the world. It's important to point out that when we reached out to representatives from Apple and from Hyundai Kia, those representatives both declined to comment on our reporting. Okay, let's get to our sound check. Here's a roundup of the day's biggest action and what the top newsmakers and business leaders had to say on CNBC's airwaves. I don't think it's good for startups. I don't think it's good for competition if you have big companies with 90% market share over search engines in the case of Google that can control the gateways to things. And so that's why uh, my bill and the work that we're doing and the House has done a lot on this too, House Representatives, is aimed at actually getting to what I consider a conservative principle, capitalism. We use our community of recruiters to help us determine where's the sentiment, uh, where's the leading indicator to the job market. And we're finally at the most optimistic we've had since we started this at the beginning of COVID. You said 3.6. Now that's out of five, so we certainly have a long way to go. What happened now is there's a maturity within the company. There's an establishment with our customers about how we operate. There's an establishment with our investors about what the mission of the company is and how we always put our customers first. And so now we're really at a point in time where I'm I'm ready to, you know, explode. Like there's huge opportunities on therapeutics and huge opportunities for our consumer business.
I think that, you know, still the vast majority of wagers are happening in the illegal market. So if you look at the legal market, uh, DraftKings was in five states last year with online sports book for the Super Bowl. We're in 12 now. So a lot more Americans have access to DraftKings now than they did last year. All right, on Tuesday, Amazon announced its biggest quarterly revenue in its history. The company brought in more than $125 billion in the fourth quarter, passing that symbolic $100 billion mark for the first time in a single quarter. However, all that information was listed below a single sentence, stating that founder, CEO, and one of the richest men in the world, Jeff Bezos, would transition out of the chief executive role and be replaced by Amazon Web Services Chief Andy Jassy. Now, over the past few days, the After Hours team dove into what awaits Bezos in his next act and what exactly Jassy will inherit once he takes the reins. A massive leadership change is underway at one of the world's most valuable companies. In the third quarter, Jeff Bezos will step down as chief executive of Amazon, the $1.6 trillion tech giant that grew out of the online bookstore he founded in 1994. Since the company went public in 1997, the stock has skyrocketed. As of the end of January, Amazon shares have surged more than 213,000% since its IPO, as innovations like one-click ordering and one- and two-day shipping became commonplace in consumers' lives. Amazon's success has made Jeff Bezos one of the richest men in the world, with a net worth of around $200 billion. And he's still the company's largest shareholder, with a 10.6% ownership stake. Bezos is stepping down after Amazon recorded its most lucrative year ever. In 2020, the company brought in $386 billion in revenue, a 38% increase from 2019. And profits jumped more than 80% to $21.3 billion. When he steps down, Bezos will become the executive chairman. And Andy Jassy, who currently runs Amazon Web Services, will become the new chief executive. Jassy started at Amazon in 1997 and has led AWS, the company's main profit engine, since its inception in 2003. It shows the strategic importance of AWS to Amazon as a whole. Jassy is a type of founder himself. After being Bezos' right-hand man and chief of staff, he's the one who pitched the creation of AWS, and Jassy's been running AWS since the very beginning of it. But Jassy will inherit significant challenges, not least of which will be antitrust scrutiny and regulatory risk. We've already seen Facebook and Google get sued by various regulatory agencies on antitrust grounds. So as these antitrust inve investigations continue both here in the EU and elsewhere, it's going to be Jassy under the hot seat being grilled by these uh, members of Congress. We already saw the Republican representative, Ken Buck, who's on the antitrust subcommittee in the House, say, hey, I'm ready to talk to Andy Jassy. Meanwhile, there's a serious effort among some Amazon warehouse workers to unionize. We have these labor unions uh, starting to form in warehouses, specifically at a warehouse Amazon owns in Alabama. And by the end of next month, we're going to know if we have the first unionized Amazon warehouse. And that could trickle throughout the whole ecosystem. As executive chairman, Bezos will still be involved in Amazon. The company's CFO made that clear on Tuesday's earnings call when he said, quote, Jeff is not leaving, he's getting a new job. But he'll no longer be CEO, meaning he'll have a lot more free time. You could call it Jeff Bezos 2.0. He's got a new partner, he's got a new physique, he's got a new wardrobe, and a whole host of new houses and social causes. He's also got the Washington Post where he's super engaged in finding a new executive editor. And last but not least, but most important for Jeff Bezos 2.0 is Blue Origin. In a memo to Amazon employees, Bezos said, I've never had more energy and this isn't about retiring. Okay, time for today's numbers round. Let's kick it off with 50. The price of Dogecoin, a cryptocurrency invented as a joke that doesn't have the same serious functional and institutional backing as something like Bitcoin, surged more than 50% today after Elon Musk tweeted, Dogecoin is the people's crypto. Now, to be clear, even with today's surge, Dogecoin is still trading at around 5 cents. A few days ago, in a chat room on audio app Clubhouse, Musk said that any of his tweets about Dogecoin were intended as jokes. This latest round of Dogecoin tweets came about two days after Musk tweeted that he would be, quote, off Twitter for a while. Next, 2.3 million. 
the New York Times added a record 2.3 million digital subscribers in 2020. 627,000 of those editions came in the fourth quarter. At the end of the year, the Times had 7.3 million total subscriptions across its print and digital offerings. The company also said that 273 million global readers consumed the Times journalism during election week, nearly twice its previous weekly record. And finally, 150. Ford is cutting production of its popular and highly profitable F-150 pickup truck due to an ongoing global semiconductor chip shortage that's plaguing the auto industry. Now, beginning on Monday, truck production will drop to one shift a week, down from three at Ford's plant in Dearborn, Michigan. The company's plant in Kansas City will drop down to two shifts instead of three. Today's announcement from Ford comes just one day after General Motors took similar action, cutting production next week at four assembly plants. Dive deeper into the strain on the semiconductor supply chain and the fallout for car makers by going to CNBC.com and downloading the CNBC app. And that's it for After Hours. We'll be back here in our home office every Tuesday and Thursday, so be sure to catch us then.